Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mr. <laughs> this is Southeast Asia, and here is Cambodia. Now, Tho Dao, shall we? It isn't known when Cambodia was first inhabited, but bones found in Samrong Sen indicate that the ancients closely resembled modern Cambodians. They gathered in villages and fished and herded pigs and water buffalo and grew rice. Some even think rice cultivation started here. All, of course, subject to the weather's whims, and there wasn't much to do in the wet season when the monsoons dictated the terms. Now, at some time, no one knows when, Indian culture began tiptoeing into Cambodia and finding a welcome home. The people even took to wearing turbans rather than straw paddy hats. By the 500s AD, India had given Cambodia a religion, a written script, a system of absolute monarchy, as well as their brand of architecture, astronomy, and more. Now, while there was a comfortable elite class, the commoners did not live so daintily. The Chinese described them as ugly with frizzy hair. They wear neither clothing nor shoes. Cambodia became a mighty power with the rise of the Khmer Empire. And yes, that is how it's pronounced. This Hindu-Buddhist state was supported by the rice-farming masses and slaves, who propped up an elite class, fond of parading about in gold on their elephants, launching military campaigns, and building big things, and the Khmer artists and architects were indeed highly skilled. Amid the usual pernicious power struggles in palace politics, there arose Surya Vermen II, who built the biggest religious building in the world, Angkor Wat, the apex of Khmer architecture, likely meant to be a mausoleum. Angkor Wat is a staggering feat of construction and artistry, an immense silent ceremony of sandstone, encircled by a mile of bar-reliefs of gods and girls and lotuses, topped by pine cone towers. J. Varman VII was the king during the empire's prime, and after him, the state slowly lessened in power. Sri Lankan monks introduced Theravad Buddhism, which would become the main religion of the country. The empire's exhausting wars against neighbors like Siam saw it decline and die in the 1400s, setting up shop somewhere else, only for that to be destroyed as well by Siamese forces, angered by Cambodian incursions into their land. Cambodia's days of glory were long gone. Its mighty temples of stone were neglected and forgotten and swallowed by the jungle. By the 19th century, humbled Cambodia was divided up between Siam and Vietnam. This sparked King Nuradam to agree to make Cambodia a protectorate of France, thus salvaging his nation from geographic deletion. So Cambodia became a piece of French Indochina. The French abolished slavery and introduced modern technologies and medicine, which resulted in a massive growth in population. The Second World War saw the Japanese occupation of Cambodia, after which Cambodia moved for and eventually won its independence. In 1953, the king kept his country neutral during the Cold War and opposed US airstrikes on targets in his territory during the Vietnam War. He was ousted in a coup, and after the ensuing civil war, the country was under the rule of the Cambodian communists, or Khmer Rouge, led by Pol Pot. Educated in Paris, he was introduced to Marxism, and little did his circle of intellectual friends know that he would become one of the century's most ruthless dictators. Like many disciples of Marx, Pol Pot had a lot of bright ideas and not a lot of patience to implement them. An atheist, he outlawed all religions and dreamed of returning Cambodia to its agrarian past, and therefore banned everything Western, even medicine, and emptied the cities, forcing the people to toil on collective farms. The total number of deaths from forced labor, starvation, torture, disease, and execution in the infamous killing fields was about two million, or a quarter of the whole country's population. But then Cambodia foolishly attacked Vietnam, and Vietnam invaded. Pol Pot fled, and Vietnam occupied the country until 1992. Though the craziness has stopped, Cambodia still languishes under a dictatorship, and the country is one of the world's most corrupt, suffering from widespread poverty. But the economy has grown, and several million people travel here annually, gazing upon those marvelous wonders from long ago when this country ruled an empire. Here's hoping Cambodia sees better days. But until then, bye-bye!